we are now on to eGRIP, or E-I-G-R-P, however you want to say it. This is the Cisco proprietary protocol. It was released in 1992, so it's from 1992, and it is a distance vector. Remember I mentioned they, back in the day, said it was a hybrid because it does some link type communications, but uh, they've since stopped referring it to, uh, referring to it as hybrid. And instead it's now referred to as just a regular distance vector. Uh, the basic functionality has now been released as an IETF standard, which is pretty nice. Uh, some of the fancier stuff like stub networks and such, uh, when you get into CCNP, you start talking about uh, more about stub and not so stubby networks and pseudo stubbies and other so all sorts of crazy stuff. The, that additional uh, functionality is still proprietary to Cisco. That's how they they get you, <laughs> but uh, the basic use is uh, now open. which is pretty nice and uh, Cisco has been doing that for a lot of their protocols actually uh, CDP for example um, I believe I mentioned that that it's now some of the functionality for read-only has been uh, released as well so they still um, they, they, they still have certain pieces of different protocols that are proprietary but if you want to use Cisco and you have some other vendor stuff as well that's mixed in you can still make it work most of the time, so that's kind of nice. It uses the uh, diffuse update algorithm. I know I mentioned that before, the dual algorithm, in order to make its uh, decisions. Remember with OSPF, that uses different algorithms, so new routing protocol, new algorithm. Uh, dual offers loop-free paths and backup paths. This is the big thing with eGRIP is the backup paths. So even though it's distance vector, it determines a distance vector how many hops do I have to go to get somewhere, but it also makes note of any backup methods it can use to get to that same location. So if something bad happens, it'll have that backup path ready to go. And there's almost no missed traffic with that. It is pr almost instantaneous where it drops that backup path into your routing table. Uh, it does neighbor adjacencies. Just like OSPF, uh, it'll send some hello packets and make some uh, neighborly handshakes and start sending traffic uh, to and from each other. And remember I mentioned uh, eGRIP is uh, agnostic to protocol so it can run multiple protocols. And due to that we can't rely on UDP or TCP in order to send our uh, update packets back and forth and, and all the different types of packets we need to send. So it has its own transport protocol because we can't rely on one since we might not be running IP for example. So we have IPv4 and IPv6 and IPX and Apple Talk and all these other protocols that people don't necessarily use anymore but are available. So in order to do that we use reliable transport protocol RTP that has been built to handle uh, egrip packets and offers both even though it's in the name it offers reliable as well as unreliable so maybe they should have called it egrip transport protocol or something but <laughs> it does it offers the similarities of TCP and UDP so depending on what kind of traffic you're sending and receiving, it'll use one of the two. 
it uses, and we'll go over some of that uh, those details. Uh, it uses unicast and multicast, depending on what kind of traffic you're sending. So the multicast address is 224, as you've probably guessed by now. They all start with 224 most, most of the time, uh, .10. And uh, the IPv6 version is FF02 colon colon A. For the updates that it sends, uh, does not send periodic updates like RIP where it'll say every 30 seconds here's my routing table. It doesn't do that. Uh, instead it does partial bounded updates. Remember we were talking about that? So it will send just the information it needs. And this is where they got into that whole thing back in the day about hybrid functionality which was uh, hotly debated. <laughs> and this is where we uh, we get into uh, that kind of gray area because it's it's sending link information. So it does, here's my link up down info. So that sounds kind of like a link state protocol, right? Uh, and it sends it only to those routers that need it. So it's bounded. So it tries to be as efficient as possible. Uh, but it still makes its decisions based upon distance. So that's why it's still technically a distance vector. Uh, but it has this nice functionality of not just spewing out its entire routing table every so many seconds. Uh, it does offer load balancing. And you can do that either with equal, as I've mentioned before, or not equal paths. So you could technically say both of these in this example up here I had drawn you could actually say from from router A to router B you can take either of these paths it's fine even though one is longer than the other uh, you can force it to do that usually people don't but you can uh, it also offers authentication I'm running out of space here but just like OSPF it does offer authentication uh, options and it uses a router ID. Remember I was harping on the whole use a loopback and I know my last examples haven't had loopbacks in it but you can just create a loopback interface loopback zero and uh, give it an IP address and you're pretty much ready to rock. Uh, eGrip uses router IDs uh, just like OSPF. So it's used by the IPv4 meth processing, it's used by IPv6 processing uh, and it does similar functionality as OSPF where it uses the highest loopback address or the highest interface address as the router ID. So it's pretty much uh, the same as OSPF in, the, in that regard. Uh, so let's blank out all this stuff. And we have a couple different types of packets. So we have hello packets. We have update packets. We have acknowledgments. There are query packets. This is sounding kind of familiar, doesn't it? And we have reply packets. So a lot of these are very similar. You get a lot of deja vu when you start talking routing protocols. Uh, so we have hello packets, which is, uh, remember I mentioned with RTP, it has unreliable or reliable. So this is where we break down who has what kind of transport. Uh, so hello packets are unreliable. If you don't get one, then we'll just try again and no big deal. Uh, that uses a multicast address. Update packets are reliable because we want to make sure we get that those updates uh, to where it needs to go. And that can either use unicast or multicast. Acknowledgements, uh, those are sent unreliably. And those are sent with unicast, since it's in reply to traffic sent directly to it. And we have query packets. Those are sent reliably. 
which is, hey, please, I, I need some information. And those are sent either unicast or multicast. And finally, we have reply packets, and those are reliable. So that's a reply to a query. And those are sent with unicast, because obviously if somebody is requesting info, we're going to reply directly to them. So from here, we're going to do some basic uh, eGrip configuration.